think are waiting to come out that long dark tunnel. Now the ritual is both teams get together in the indoor track and up they come. Referee Kenny Holt. Behind them, Terry Butcher of Rangers, Roy Aitken of Celtic. Team for today, they have, uh, of course, the problems of not having West, who underwent an operation this week, and it looks as if he's going to be out for some time. Ted McMinn, or Kevin McMinn, which is his proper name, is brought in there at number eight. There's also a change in the fullback position with Monroe coming in. Bunch playing in the fullback position with Ali Dawson, and Dawson was injured as well, of course. As for the others, well, they're in the positions that we expected them to be. And, of course, the player manager, Graham Sinners, is banned from today's game and is in the dugout. Now, the Celtic team for today. Celtic have had a very impressive start to the season. The only real changes that have taken place are with Peter Grant, who was brought on as a substitute in the previous game. Grant, a very powerful player for Celtic, an excellent midfield player, he seemed to pass out of favour for some time and now is established in the team again, is hoping to establish himself along with teenager, 18-year-old Derek White. It's his birthday today and of course he'll be hoping for some happy blessings and that number 11, one of the most promising attackers in the business, Owen Archdeacon. That is a very strong-looking Celtic side. Now Terry Butcher with a little fellow there Alec Minty. The normal rituals going on. Well, I think it's Alec Minty, his father, who's his sponsor. This is little William. And I think he gets keeping the call. Oh, he's making the toss. And I think Rangers have won the toss. I'm not quite sure if they're changing ends. There is quite a a strong wind which is blowing from left to right. But Rangers will stay as they are. Now with me, as I said earlier, is Jim McLean. I would imagine that even the most experienced players, Jim, will be affected by this blast of noise. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Well, it is so, it is so, so noisy that even Jim McLean beside me can't hear what I'm saying. We'll get in touch with Jim in a second. It really is so noisy here that the stand is erupting behind us and Jim can hardly hear. So. Rangers will be playing against a very stiff breeze. Now, I'm sure that the supporters and the officials and that has to be retaken. The supporters, the officials, the players will realise that this game is going out live on television and is a wonderful showpiece for could be a wonderful showpiece for Scottish football. I'm not saying that television obligates them to do everything in terms of showbiz and entertainment, but nevertheless, they have the opportunity of uh, spreading the gospel in a much wider way than they would have normally. Now, I think we've made communications with Jim as long last. Got the, the earplugs out, which was a crowd just behind him. Jim, the experienced players will be affected, I'm sure, as well as the novices by this noise. Well, I think nobody could be failed to uh, be in, find problems with the atmosphere here today. But I think that in the, the whole, it'll bring out the best in the game, uh, in the players. I think that uh, one of the most important factors will be uh, the experience for us, obviously. And there is Boris Johnson just turning round from Butcher, who gets in his first tackle in his old firm match. Behind him, David McPherson.
Paul McStay with that superb game against Aberdeen recently. This is Cooper. Grant is with them. That's touched to the side, and there is Butcher. Confidently filling that little gap that appeared. McCoy then swept away. McGugan stepping in. Pat Bonner, the Irish international goalkeeper, brought to Parkhead by the late Jock Steen. Looked out there by Cammy Fraser. Cammy Fraser going through a rebirth for Rangers. There's Fraser, and that might be the first corner. It is. Two Rangers. Huge roar in the background there from the Copeland Road and Govan stands where the Rangers supporters are assembled. Fraser with it. <laughs> well, the football wasn't giving it enough to play in the old firm. Man, you've got to put up with the pieces of paper. Butcher up for it, here is Cooper, there's a touch! Bit of a ricochet there as the Celtic defence massed successfully. McClare. A great tackling there by McMinn. And sweeps it away, McMinn playing well immediately for Rangers. Ferguson, McClare with a tackle, Durant. And I think Durant has been hurt. He's getting up though, now Cooper in a brilliant position for Rangers. And it goes and nobody goes to the ball. What of a cloud. This very promising youngster, Derek White. Irish internationalist, Northern Ireland. Jimmy Nicol. I think uh, Jimmy could hardly believe he's locked that he's got a second chance with Rangers. Free kick to Rangers. Almost four minutes gone. Slightly taken. But it goes again. Here's Cooper with a chance. And out comes Bonner. That's good goalkeeping. Saw the danger immediately, now the break by McClare. Nice little touch to Johnson. Good understanding amongst the Celtic forward players there. Paul McStay. Monroe keeping his eye on the ball. Roger Angel. Ferguson. Monroe. There, they're looking fast forward there by Stuart Monroe. I think Rangers have conceded in their signings and attempted signings, but they're concerned about the fullback position. But Monroe showing he's not at all going to be bothered by that uh, conjecture. Just a bit too much by Cooper. man who wouldn't be put off by this atmosphere, Roy Aiken. Absolutely loves an old firm match. Chris Woods. His first touch of the ball. I think Andy Graham is exactly right in saying that uh, this young lad will be under pressure, enormous pressure. In an atmosphere like this. Twice. There's White. No problems for the Celtic defence. Butcher. More off the cap than anything else. Away goes Gerard to brought down. Roddy McLeod was not going to let Gerard get away there. Free kick quickly taken. Nicol. On to Gerard. McGugan in very hard and fair. So taken, on goes McMinn. Sweet out there by 
of white. Ferguson and offside. Ian Gerrard made the break, saw the gap, but the linesman had his flag up immediately. Little Ian Gerrard impressed everybody by the start he's had to the season. Reminiscent in many ways of uh, Alec McDonald, at least he, he, he is to me. He's a, the beaverish kind of player, works very hard, and with a degree of skill as well. We were wondering before the game, Jim, what Rangers' formation would be, and uh, the fact that they don't have West today, they have McMinn and Cooper playing with maybe three at the front. Well, I obviously thought that uh, McMinn would play as a winger, and in the first five minutes, the uh, first couple of minutes, he seemed to play more through the middle again uh, with McCoy's, and uh, my biggest worry for Rangers, obviously, is uh, the support with McCoy's. If they play as two winners and stay wide, uh, Rangers will find it a hard through the middle. And there, I think, is a goal kick. Six feet three of Terry Butcher with the Celtic standaway in the background there. One of the most impressive shots you can get at Ibrox in that low position. Nice little touch by Ferguson, and again, pushed there by Mortimer McLeod on Ian Durant. Certainly wasn't there when that free kick was taken. Nice little touch down there by Cooper as Monroe makes a run. Oh, and he's too slow. Ball is over. Nice one had his flag up. Go to Rangers. Must be exasperating for a player like uh, Debbie Cooper to set it up for someone like Monroe, and he's far too slow. Tries to get the return, break by Celtic. And there's Butcher in. Cool. And here's Paul McStay. Paul McStay certainly has the ability to control a game, and that was a very late tackle. Free kick to Celtic. Might have been just a little bit of revenge there by Indurant. As usual, Mother McLeod has seen a lot of the play. Nobody works harder than him in the Celtic side. It's put right there by Grant. And the poise, but I think Derek White will get there first. But it's a kind of day in which uh, even strikers have got to come back and show that they can earn the corn by working hard in midfield as well. This game is about total commitment. Butcher. Jim. The game still uh, hasn't settled down, in my opinion. The players are still uh, being affected by the atmosphere. Roy Aitken would never pass the ball out. Now they good on the break. Superb move by Rangers there. Trying to take his man on, and he does. There's a little chip across. There's Cooper, and he can't get the header in. And Rangers producing the first real threat of the game in that move on the right. Which are watching that closely. Beautiful header out of the fence. Fraser playing it safely. Here's Nickel. Brought back by Graham Sinister Bolster. This uh, what was certainly very shaky looking. Rangers defense at full back position. And now Nickel again. And he goes on the run. He has Durant there as well. There's Durant. Nickel. Aiken majestically in the middle of his penalty area. Now Tommy Burns. Played that very calmly. Good break by Celtic. Paul McStay. 
with Johnson away wide. Johnson with Butcher. And Butcher deals with that confidently enough. Some managers have been saying of Butcher that the way to attack him is on the ground, keeping it close. He's, of course, superb in the air. Archdeacon. Well, that's a useful looking ball. Monroe, a little bit lucky he got that down. And now David Cooper. I don't think Roy can you just quite where that ball had ended up. There's Butcher. Plays it very coolly indeed. Now Cooper. Monroe. Butcher. towards McMinn. I think McGugan will have that covered, he does. No real strut, strain on the big 22-year-old defender. Son playing excellently for Celtic abroad in the first Atletico Madrid game. Now McStay. The run forward, and there's McPherson. Difficult to recognize some of these Rangers players this season. When I saw him and uh, Derek Ferguson, I thought they'd sign new players. It's the hairstyle. That we get free kick. Butcher. That's a McCoist. Good little break by Cooper. Now Durant. Aiken with them, and that's right. And that will be a booking for Roy Aiken. I think Roy tried to tell him it's his first tackle, but uh, I here think, it is. I think it's a wee bit harsh uh, because it is the first goal he's committed. Looking at the game, I think that it can be won or lost with the wingers against the fullbacks, uh, with Cooper against Grant, McMinn against uh, uh, Derek White, and also Archdeacon will change from one to one. So the booking there for Roy Aiken, first of the game, and the free kick to Rangers. Rightly taking great care in writing that name into the book. He wants the two Celtic defenders back a bit. Brandon next day. It's wide and that was a very loose ball to head down to the edge of the penalty area. There's Mickman. Just a bit too far. That's the free kick, yes. McLeod was fouled. I still think, uh, in underlining what Jim McLean said there, that it's a nervy kind of game. I don't think I can recall a Rangers Celtics match in the last three weeks getting quite so much publicity before. Derek White. There's McPherson. Good break by McStay. He brought that down beautifully. Tries to take Monroe and turn. Easily broken up by Ferguson. There was no support for McStay. Intelligent run to the right. Cooper. To Almost getting it through. Now, McMinn. Astonishing freedom for McMinn. Then it's back again, appeals for a penalty, but it's not given. Yes, McGugan saying it was a chest, it's a corner kick. Corner to Rangers. We've now played on the 16 minutes. Still no scoring. And probably Rangers slightly with the edge in terms of chances. Up goes Butcher, just underneath it. Down and roll. Free kick. Morris Johnson, well, 
typical of a lot of strikers they're, they're not the most sophisticated of tacklers so Rangers to take this looks as if there was slight holding back there With Johnson Ferguson it's going to be a marvellous midfield duel here as well between the, the likes of players like McStay and Ferguson now Claire. And away goes Ferguson to Durant. Just holding it up slightly, looking for support. McMinn. Now Fraser. Fraser for Rangers. While well, the flag goes up. Lashed in there by McPherson had come forward. And uh, sometimes a referee can get hit by a player kicking the ball away like that, even though it's for goal. So it's not the sort of thing one advises a player to do. Nevertheless, he gets away with it that time. That's the scoreline. I make it on my watch that uh, 17 minutes have gone. We're still awaiting the opening goal. with a free kick. They're running forward there by Grant. Just a slightly unlucky. Looking very alert. When he first came into the Celtic team in midfield and started to strike long, accurate passes. One felt there's a great uh, Celtic midfielder in the making. McMinn. Obstruction. McMinn, in fact, Jim, is uh, looking reasonably promising for Rangers on the right. At the moment, he's definitely winning the contest between him and Derek Wright. Uh, they've got to make sure what Rangers got to make sure what they get pointed about to Kevin Ah, uh, here's McMinn again. Relishing this game. And White gets a better run that time. More incisive tackle. There's a lovely ball. And I think the linesman has his flag up. Yes, he has. Offside. Grant. McPherson, there's Fraser, Nickel to McMahon. One of these ambling awkward runs of his, that's brilliant play by McMahon. There's a good ball and a brilliant save by Bonner. One of the best moves of the game, capped by a quite excellent clinical kind of save. Superb set up there by McMahon. And that tantalising ball almost to the head of Ali McCloyce and brilliantly saved by the big Irishman. Exciting, flowing play there from Rangers. McMahon again. Seems to want to take them all on. Fraser. Round the side, and that's a bit too much. He cut off by McGugan. <laughs> Nickel behind it for Rangers. McGugan. Burns. We haven't seen too much of Tommy Burns in this game yet. All you need is 30 seconds from the likes of Tommy Burns and he can turn again. He has the skill and the talent. Like this man, Cooper.
Monroe for Rangers. McCoy turning well on that and good covering there by Mother McLeod. Leclerc brought that down brilliantly. Good job, very calmly, and that looked a promising Celtic move again. And Rangers applying McMinn for the ball. Jimmy Nickel on the run. Yes, I think the referee indicating, after having looked at the linesman, that that's a free kick. That tackle on uh, Jimmy Nickel penalised by the referee. Free kick to Rangers. 22 minutes gone. And as always, the opening goal in a game like this is so vital. Long and high and beyond everybody, and that'll be a corner kick. Slight dissension in the Rangers' ranks there about that, the way that uh, free kick was taken. Much too high and long, and I think it was meant for Butcher originally. Corner by David Cooper. Ball still in play. Here's Nickel. Floated again. There's the header. There's McMinn up. Corner kick, and Rangers are turning the screw. Really putting the pressure on. And there's the big gangling man who's causing a lot of the problems for Celtic. Ted McMinn signed for about 200,000 from Dumfries. From Kuti the South as that corner is taken. <laughs> the referee awarding that free kick to Celtic. I wouldn't like to sort that one out. Who's fouled who in that occasion? Quick attack though by Celtic, Tommy Burns. Nice little change of direction. Boris Johnson, maybe not without justification, a feeling for a free kick there as he went down. All the way through to McCoist. There's Durant, here's Ferguson. Fraser off the side of the foot. He tried to curl it round towards David Cooper. McStay. Here's Monroe. Cooper. Monroe on the run. That's not a bad cross. And White. Very intelligent to win. There's Cooper though. Almost touches it through. And the Celtic defence had to tighten up and did. But Rangers, in the past 10 minutes, certainly have had more of the game going forward. Too much in that. Jim. Ted McMinn must get in the box when the cross is from the left-hand side here. Alan McCoy's been left far too much in his own. The main support in the game is coming from the boys around, but the lack of height in the box has, uh, in my opinion, been really make that Rangers are struggling to score. Well, that was meant for McMinn, but uh, much too ambitious. I think the clear suggestion there by uh, Jim McLean that although Rangers have been putting on the pressure, a lot of the play around the penalty area, that a lot of the final balls are leaving the one Rangers player stranded. And the score is still nothing each. 25 minutes of the first half gone. That, I think, will be a free kick to Rangers as... Six feet two, David McPherson tumbles, and that's a, a long height to tumble from. There he goes into the penalty area, signed from Gartkosh Amateurs uh, Rangers. Three Rangers players having run that, all expert in this area. Fraser, Cooper, or Nico. Round the side, or well read though by Owen Archdeacon, a little too obvious. Not the most incisive pass back, but it worked. McPherson. Ray 
Fraser. Rangers quite calmly playing it around the back. And that's too much. The noise volume here is quite incredible. I think it's even louder than I've experienced it here in the past. Burns, beautiful little pass by Burns, seeing the opening. Mud in the clouds. No, the referee's giving it the other way. Brian Leclerc quite annoyed about that. It's a throw to Rangers. Monroe. Time to play very coolly and calmly at the back. <laughs> Meanwhile, the crowd have taken over. Song and counter song. Durant. Go to Rangers. Now Monroe, David Cooper, there's Monroe, he dabs it forward, there's McMinn with a shot and it's just to the side, and Rangers did get people into the penalty area that time but it decided that the shot was coming from the outside, nice ball by Monroe, Celtic defence in two minds there. White did get behind it. Adam McCoy's might well over the go himself. But there was McMinn on the volley just to the side. Durant. Good play again by Rangers. Here's Nickel. Ted Bigman. Here's Nickel. That'll be a corner kick. Well, this is Rangers' uh, fifth corner. Celtic haven't had one yet. Perhaps an indication of how this first half has gone. And we're now we're virtually on the 30-minute mark. We are in fact now 30 minutes gone as this corner is taken. It goes back to Cooper. He won't hesitate, but not a very clever one. His players have gone back the way, and that's a, a very intelligent throw out there by Pat Bonner. Leclerc. Butcher. Can play there by Fraser. Certainly an enormously improved player from the one I saw last season. Here's McMinn. On he goes. Almost got it away. What a game he's having for Rangers. Here's McMahon. Corner kick again. And he really is having a marvellous game. He's an eccentric player in many ways. You know, one leg points northeast, other southwest, and in all that form, nobody knows quite what he's going to do, and he is causing all those problems for Celtic. It's Fraser, and it's just over. And Rangers really have, at this moment, a command of the game, Jim. Well, without doubt, an outstanding player at the moment is Ted McMahon. He is trying to do the most difficult thing in the game, and that is take people on, and he's doing it magnificently. But the lack of height in the box is definitely proving a problem for Rangers. And 
from time to time you have one set of supporters roused, then the other. Hornet's Day. The cloud. Still in play, thought the whistle might have gone. Durant's lost his boot as McMinn goes forward again. Here's McMinn. Can he get his shot? And he does. And the Rangers report are rising to this man. Harbour, Aiken on the run. Monroe is there for Rangers, though. And there is West. Woods, rather. <laughs> I'll get these Englishmen right yet. Chris Woods. I think a factor for Celtic is that we've not seen near enough of Tommy Burns. It was 28 minutes there and I forgot he was playing. So uh, a player of his calibre has got to get us into this game somehow. Certainly suggested that earlier on, Jim, and he hasn't come back into it for some reason. And Rangers uh, midfield, in fact, the young boys playing very well. Without doubt, that's, uh, in my opinion, where Rangers have, have got a complete grip in the game. It's in midfield, and that's a vital part in the modern game. Now, Paul McStay, of whom much is always expected in games. That's a free kick, surely, yes. And uh, I think Durant will be seen to now. Durant has been lined and he lost his boot, boot. Durant, one of these younger players that we've been talking about. Ali McCoy's with him, getting a drink of something or other. And still the noise goes on here. Rangers have certainly had the better of this first half. There's no question about that. But the outstanding player of field, Ted McMinn. And we are right in the middle of that platform, right in the middle of the picture that you can see now. And that is part of the reason why it is so very, very difficult to hear each other up on the platform. It really is. Huge crowds in the enclosure just below us. Another shot of the... New electronic scoreboard they have here with the time, 34 minutes, which is uh, just about the same as our watch. 34 minutes gone. And there is Durant taking his time, coming back into the play. Three kick, two Celtic. Test for this defence, and I think McGugan got the touch. There's McMinn back there, putting it away. Go to Celtic. Celtic supporters still urging their team on. The game now settled down all the same. Now that's a good ball to Aiken. Razor comes up. Aiken taking his time about that. There goes wide. Tries to touch it back. Razor. Will Cooper get it? He does. Cooper away for Rangers. There's McCoist inside. And Fraser. Touched away beautifully, though. Now Derek White. Dusty boy. And that's easy for Butcher. Derek Ferguson. Still nothing each. And if I can turn it old phone game. The likes of Paul McStay there. That was a very loose pass though. Fraser's run the side to Cooper. Then it's wet, not hard enough. Fraser with a chance he scored. And it must be no. How that stayed out, I will never know. Quite incredible misses. It should have been sunk the first time. In fact, a brilliant shot here by Fraser. Right off the post, and what's the chance that Ali McCoy had brilliantly saved, although foot far too near the keeper. And out of all that, a corner kick, a mere award. And I think 
a nudge. And one wonders, Jim, if that happens in a game like that, of a game of such importance of how it affects a team that misses a chance like that. Well, players tend to think uh, they wonder where, when they're going to score. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, the attacking play, Rangers are by far uh, the better side. I'm very surprised with the calibre of the midfield that Celtic have. But Celtic always possess, even when they're going through a mediocre phase, which they have in the last 20 minutes or so, they always possess that threat up front. Johnson and McQuarrie always capable of scoring goals, even in adverse circumstances. That's exactly the way I'm feeling at the moment, actually. The Rangers have had so much play and have nothing to show for it. But probably Celtic will break away and uh, score one. Here's Owen Archdeacon. Brilliant tackling. McLeod following up. And Monroe's happy enough to shove that across. Well, that's a pattern, Jim, of many an old firm game. You know, one in top for so long. I've seen it happen one way and then the other. And that's exactly what Celtic will now be trying to do from this throwing. I think it's a problem in any game. Taking his time about it, Owen Arch Deacon, I think that's gone over, yes it has. Oh, it's a slack one by McVin. Here's Butcher. Very coolly out. Proto Rangers. Just too slight that time. I think uh, Teddy Butcher gave him a, a stern little look. Butcher wanted to take this throw himself. On the way to Durant. Celtic have got a grip of themselves again. Grant. McStay. Too quick and too much from Paul McStay. Who certainly hasn't uh, made his usual imprint on this game. One expects him to go around it coolly and with authority. And that just hasn't quite come. But early days yet. Grant. We cleared through, there was no defence there. Owen oh, Archdeacon. Tantalising ball and nickel is there for Rangers. Here's Derek White. He's aiming for a shot, he is. And way wide. But the youngster just as well trying that. The Rangers defence were beginning to come out towards him and one of the few Celtic shots in this half. I wonder if the Rangers players are feeling a wee bit sorry for themselves now with the shot coming off the post there. Because Celtic are starting to play a wee bit now. They certainly are. Paul McStay. Well, that's a lovely ball through the middle. And there's Butcher very coolly back with that. He was really under pressure. There wasn't much margin for error in anything he did, and he got it exactly right. Aiken. It's swelling a bit in Aiken, confidently behind it. And so is one of the cloud, and one feels to reiterate what Jim McLean was saying, that Celtic, let off the hook by that miss, are beginning to reassert themselves, found a new nerve and confidence. And Rangers once again stringing it along the back. McMinn. Jimmy Nicol. Here's McMahon. 
Good tackle that time, though. McGugan right across. He'll leave it to Nickel. Once Fraser forward. Here's Nickel. Oh, bad one, and Celtic now on the break. Tommy Burns. The break by Burns. Easily mopped up by Butcher, and really it gave Mo Johnson no chance whatsoever that pass. Oh, great play again by McMahon, away he goes. The crowd is there, McMahon. Referee weighs play on, and McMahon, from time to time, has been uh, slicing his way through that Celtic defence. But nothing has come of it. McClare. Just a bit too tidy, and here's McPherson. Nickel, Durant. Here's Butcher. It's wide, it's towards Durant. And he'll settle for the throw. Here's McMahon. What's the cross going to be like? It's not a good one. That's a flaw in McMahon's game, by the way. He can build up very good chances for himself. Sometimes his final pass lets the previous move down, as it did there. Grant. Mother McLeod will he let fly. Trying to find a position. And that is a corner kick. With only a minute and a half to the end of this half, it's the first corner kick for Celtic. Will be taken by Owen Archdeacon. Chris Woods directing his defence. And this is a real test for him. And uh, yes, free kick, he was nudged as he went for it. Given the protection by the referee. There's Butcher selling them all. Club captain and marshalling his forces. Time whistle should go any second. The end of a, a first half in which Rangers might feel justified in saying they should have gone in in the lead. And there it goes. The first half has ended. There's a half time score and a really palpitating first half that Rangers dominated for long spells. They built up some marvelous chances for themselves but let themselves down with some very poor finishing. They have been the masters of much of this half in front of this uh, 44,000 crowd, and standing out a mile is Ted McMinn, the Rangers uh, winger who has taken the Celtic defence apart any time he's been on the ball. Rangers' best chance calling to Cammy Fraser, but 10 minutes before half-time, when he lashed in the shot that came off the post, it came back out to Arnie McCoy. And Andy as Celtic trot out onto the pitch for the second half. And uh, there is little doubt that the rather taciturn and shy David Hay, that's what he sometimes appears to be, would have been a very lively man in the dressing room as he tries to express his feelings about a team that perhaps have not given him as much as he would have liked that typical Celtic commitment was there in one or two of the players and I would imagine well I, I think I would be extremely surprised if we didn't see a different Celtic attitude in the second half just casting my eyes around to see if there are any substitutions Willie McStay is on Willie McStay has uh, come on for Celtic bending down away on the far side as uh, Celtic are about 
to restart the game. The score is still nothing each in front of this absolutely splendid, marvellous, colourful crowd of 44,000. That's good, though. And Andy Gray was saying something to the effect of a, a grand advertisement for Scottish football. Well, I think it has. No matter how the result goes at the end of the day, we already have had exciting flowing football in a sporting game. Celtic starting the second half, and there is a substitute, Willie McStay. To Mackay, to Derek White. Just touched out there. Will he make stay on, Jim? Yes, uh, there must have been something wrong with uh, Tommy Burns because he, he didn't seem to uh, take part in the game at all. So I think they're looking for more strength in the midfield. Razor. Loose sort of pass all the same. Beautifully done by McGugan. What an assortment of fine young players we have on this field. There's one of them, Derek Ferguson, pushed right off the ball. Slight little complaint there by Paul McStay, but not all that much. It was a free kick. Butcher to take it. Looks at high, there's McMinn, and climbing up his opponent, a little bit of mountaineering going on there. Well, if he does nothing else, he certainly deserves his wages for that first half performance. A real entertainer. Nothing that Rangers can show from what he did. I, I realize that, but some marvelously exciting runs, nevertheless. And Rowe slicing it away. Peter Grant has moved into the midfield. As I said of him earlier, he made a marvellous start to his uh, career with Celtic, then started to fade out of it slightly. That's a good ball, and an even better one on the McLeod with the shot, and brilliantly tackled by Nichol. Suddenly, Martin McLeod found himself in that free position, and it took a superb tackle by Nichol to thwart him. Starting on the attack immediately in this half. Easily plucked out of the air. Woods has not really been put under fire at all in this match. I suspect he might get some pressure in the second half. Fraser. No offside. And McGuggan pulled Adam McCoy's back. It's a free kick to Rangers. Cammy Fraser's weakness was just shown there when he allowed Mc, uh, McLeod to run off him. He was caught ball watching. And ball watching is a favourite phase of Mr. McLean's. I've heard him criticise his players for that before. And here is a free kick to Rangers. And any of three of the players could take it here. In fact, I think Mr. Hope, Kenny Hope, the referee, wants a follow back. Fraser can hit them. So can Cooper. Fraser with the shot, and it's almost there. Goes for a penalty. And nothing's been given. It's a corner kick. Well, Pat Bonner, a nervy sort of save from this free kick. It went right through, there he gets down on it. It's a test for the goalkeeper, and it seemed to be just eluding him. And there was no penalty kick, as we can see from that replay. Now, well, it seemed to be a bit of climbing again. There's McPherson. seemed extraordinary because I thought McGugan had played the entire Rangers line on but it's offside
and I think the referee's going to have a word with Terry Butcher and McGugan Jim I didn't see anything happen at all but no. from the start of the game at every set piece both of them have been using their arms but I didn't see anything happen there seemed like a final warning about it in any case free kick very neat play by Rangers Ali McCoyce here's Cooper Monroe on the run doesn't quite come though Durant Monroe Cooper Cooper cutting in here's Durant here's Fraser now McMinn Oh, now it's Deacon back with him, McMinn. Now Nickel. Alan McCoy's right underneath it. He had a very good position there. Now, McCoy's hasn't had much latitude from this Celtic defence, but he did have it there. There was a gap, there was a position, and he got it all wrong as the ball swung towards him. It's a great ball from Jimmy Nickel there. Push there by Ferguson. Free kick to Celtic. Roy Aiken taking it again. There's Butcher up. Very confidently. Now McMinn. McMinn again going for this defence. There he goes. Sometimes you never know where the run's going to end up. He really stretched Celtic again, though. They had to go after him. Johnston, McStay. Arch Dickon. High right off the ball. David Hay tactically. David Hay tactically at half time, I think, has uh, put Modder McLeod's uh, running power to try and stop McMahon. I think that that's very good. Free kick. McGugan doing a bit of charging and on it goes now to McCoy. Doesn't quite get there. Aiken read that well. Realise we're going to take it very quickly. Jim, do you want to say something again? I was just at half time I've been trying to think what the managers were saying and most certainly I would think the Celtic manager must have had more to moan about than the Rangers manager. In tactical, I think David here has definitely sorted out. I tried to sort out the problem of Ted McMinn with the boy Apps Deacon checking back slightly more, but in particular, uh, Murder McLeod's strong running inside to try and help the boy Derek White. So, Celtic, Roy Aiken, Willie McStay, the substitute. Forward he comes, away goes Derek Ferguson. Beautiful play, Ferguson running. There's a great chance for Rangers now, McMinn. Tried to take it himself. Here's Jimmy Nickel. Nickel with that. Ferguson's away. And beautiful play by McStay. Great defensive play. Johnson. No, that's Grant, rather. There's Johnson. Celtic sweeping on a counter-attack. That's a corner kick. And you can hear the Celtic support now. A bit of shouting and bawling there, I think, towards McMinn, who was a bit selfish. He had Ferguson in the middle going through. Deacon who's down there. Yes, I think that ball should have been shoved to the, the centre, Jim, that last move by McMinn. 
the player through the middle was slightly offside. McMinn had to hold it a little, but he held it far too long. What a game we've got now. Again without goals, but again something not lacking in incident or quality play. That little burst by Morris Johnson raises hopes again of a Celtic revival. And by revival, I mean the very things that both Andy Gray and Jim McLean have been talking about in that Celtic have been in the shell for far too long. I think surprisingly far too long. And they might get Greg out of it. Up it goes, and I think, yes, the referee who had a word previously with both McGugan and Butcher giving the benefit of the doubt that time, if you could put it that way, to the Rangers captain. With a lot of fouls in that area, he is Butcher. That was a late tackle, yes, by McClare. Monroe going down, it is a very tough game now. All the players have settled into the match. We had a, a very clean first half. Just the one tackle and that got slightly out of hand by Roy Aiken. And now free kick. Butcher with it. Ball curling away. Jimmy Nichol. Slightly off balance. What of a cloud. Here's Fraser, run by McMinn, McGugan with him. And I think Rangers may get the free kick for that challenge. The modern players at times are so crazy, it's absolutely unbelievable to give a foul away in a situation like that. And it happens repeatedly in the modern game. Free kick it is. Cammy Fraser with it. goes Butcher and it's just over he did get the better of that aerial duel that time it's been a duel of the titans between this pair both the same height both powerful muscular kind of players rising up there and Butcher that drooping header just over and very badly fluffed. Here's Durant, didn't bring it down well. McPherson. Here's Bigman. Outside, Durant. Yeah. <laughs> Apologetic semaphoring going on there from Ted McMahon. One of the clouds. Jim McLean suggested backtrack very quickly. Free kick, yes. Well, that's a nice little ball by Mitchell. Very quiet. Celtic supporters lifting the side. Great play by Mitchell again, and he gets a throw. away by McGugan. Poist. I think that will be a throw. I don't think there was any deflection there. Oh, it's a corner kick. Corner been awarded. Fraser with it. Bonner. Right in charge of that situation. The whistle's gone. The noise is so intense. You certainly can't hear it. 
And I think we're about to get a Celtic substitution. With Alan McAnally about to come on, it'll be in place of Owen Archdeacon. Now, McAnally is quite a powerful player. Well, I think they're looking for his strength through the middle. Uh, uh, Archdeacon really hasn't contributed a lot in the game. Jimmy Nicholl has marked him very tight. But I think the biggest problem is definitely the control and midfield that Rangers have had for most of the game. It's a wee bit more even this half. And a kind of lull in the game and the spectators take over with songs again. McGugan. Here's McStay. Almost cut off, good run forward by McStay and again. Grant. What's the cross going to be like? There's Butcher. And again. Celtic still with the pressure on though. Grant. Shot by McClough. Always, I think, going to the side. I think Woods had that covered. Still, Celtic now fighting back. There he was. Exasperation in the jump by Boris Johnson. Celtic now, now McClare. Down to Cooper. Yes, Cooper. Now McMinn. It's a marvellous game we're having. No goals, admit that, but some marvellous football. Fraser, that's a trundly one by Fraser. Domenico. Fraser. More tried looking pass, that was dangerous. McClare. Brilliant tackle by Butcher. Here's Cooper. Now Durant. McMahon, Morris Johnson back to defend. There he is. There's the cross. And it's beyond everybody again. Somehow or other, the final pass is always eluding Rangers. However, they fight back. Through it goes towards Durant. Almost a very telling pass. And it's not a bad match, Jim. Oh, it's now a magnificent game. And uh, I still think that... Uh... McMinn, final ball into the box is definitely the factor that the uh, Rangers are still next to it. Butcher right across and it's a corner. Corner to Celtic. And Celtic simply haven't been able to counter McMinn. What has helped them is that uh, final ball that we've been talking about. Further. Step. That's the kind of save I think Woods has been waiting for. He was under a little bit of pressure that time and showing absolute confidence. Here's Durant to make men again. Booking. We'll see the referee calling over Derek uh, White. No, just a, a little warning to him. And McManus Hutt. There he was trying to take the youngster again, and that was late. Just looking down at the watch here now with uh, 19 minutes gone, you'll see that. Occasionally yourselves on the electronic scoreboards. That's the score line. It'll be a free kick to Rangers when play is resumed. And uh, it strikes me that McMinn might have twisted his knee, but he is getting up.
once again, eluding that curve of Rangers players coming in. Oh, Monroe easily beaten then. Lovely counter-attack, McAnally showing his strength immediately. And the strong running of Alan McAnally turned the tide there, stretching the whole length of the field. And there's no final side when you get uh, attack and counter-attack surging in that pulsating manner in an old firm match. It's high and push. Yes. Feds was a uh, Chris Woods getting the referee's protection. There he is. Looking quite imperturbable. throw to Rangers. Up comes McPherson. Here's Fraser. McMahon. Gets a corner. Surely, having had one of his finest games, for Rangers, as David Cooper this time comes across. Butcher having elected to stay behind this time. Touched away brilliantly by Bonner. Superb save. And he wonders where the defence was. Celtic players at the front post here are standing wondering who's going to attack the ball and allow it to go through them. They're very fortunate to come away out that without losing the ball. And that was a great piece of goalkeeping as he clutched out at it. I think a push by Ferguson on uh, Paul McStay. And the spectators make no mistake about it are playing their part in this match, the swirling of scars, the holding them up like banners by the Celtic supporters, the swirl of the Rangers supporters, this constant whirlpool of activity. Right through it goes, go kick. And we're now halfway through the second half. Jimmy Nichol. Fraser, here's Durant, beautifully around the side. Durant for Rangers. Nickel. White. Not sure where to put that. And Nickel lets it go over. Rangers, I feel, have definitely missed. Uh, Colin West's height in the box because some of the crosses have been not too bad, especially from Nickel. Haken. McAnally. Play goes on. Here's Monroe. Durant. To Cooper. Run long forward there by Monroe. Haken. That's a corner. Corner to Rangers. Rangers 11th corner. Cooper again will take it. This time Butcher has come forward. Goes away to the outside. Picked away by Johnson brilliantly. Back to Monroe. The slack ball by Monroe. Seems to be slightly injured.
White. Butcher. Yes, McAnally pushing. Now referee wants the ball taken from the infringement spot. Long and away to McMinn again. He took that down brilliantly. Superb play by the big man. Well, I thought that was perfectly fair. McMinn made a meal of that one. Aiken. McStay. There's McStay to his brother Paul. Now White. Straight to it. No real challenge on that uh, Rangers defence that time. Gugan easily for that one. McAnally. Butcher right underneath it. I think there might be a booking for Butcher in this. For that late tackle, there is. is booking Chris is booking Butcher for this Teddy Butcher's name goes in the book and it will be a free kick to Celtic away on the right Rangers captain goes now I think Willie McStay will take this <laughs> 27 minutes of the second half gone oh brilliantly taken He's a safe-looking goalkeeper. He has made one or two mistakes, Jim, since he's well, come here. On today's show, he's been magnificent in the air. Crosses are where goalkeepers are usually suspect that too, so he's had an exceptional game with uh, the crosses so far. Tupa. Good to for the chance, and he's done it! A brilliant goal by Durant! Superbly struck, brilliantly laid on by David Cooper. And if ever a team deserved the lead, it's Rangers. Only for a short period of Celtic got into the game. Look at that beautifully laid off ball, Durant. Absolutely cool. The way he executed the finish. Rangers are in the lead, and about 16 minutes of the game left. The youngster took his time about it, didn't panic, and Rangers have their noses in front. Butcher. Johnston. Butcher, Ferguson. Liz Monroe. To Butcher. Rangers got to keep the ball for a wee while now, but uh, that goal there, Cooper was very good, but uh, Durant's running off the ball was magnificent. McCoist. Oh, 
Swept away to the coins. Roy Aiken in the way. Butcher. Offside, yes. Just a pace too much. Boy Durant finished that goal at a veteran too, so uh, uh, a lot of the talent out here today makes uh, me very excited for the future of Scottish football. Up goes Butcher, there looked to be a bit of a push there, but Celtic trying to fight back very hard indeed. Ferguson rather. There's Fraser. So reverse pass. Here's Alan McCoy's. Almost right through. Brilliant piece of play, play by McCoy's. Chesting it round. And he was brought down. If he had got round there, that would have killed the game, I think. Look at that. Although. Looking at it again, Jim, he didn't make much effort to go around Aiken, did he? I feel really sorry for Roy Aiken in that situation. I feel that like Alan McCoy knew he wasn't going to get the ball and run straight into uh, Roy Aiken. Free kick to Rangers. A very tense moment for this Celtic defence. Young Ian Durant. Hovering up the side. Still Rangers undecided about how to take this. Almost in there, wall of green and white. Out to Cooper again. Here's Cooper, brilliantly. And it goes now. And that's it, Sim. for Rangers no no it's been disallowed the referee has chopped it off interesting to see that one again Cooper going right here Short by coins up here now, and they've hit some of us. So it's a danger zone. Now make it uh, just over ten minutes to go. Got 
de Celtic. Fraser. McNamara. Gaps the corner. Rangers. And uh, I think the Rangers physio ought to attend Derek Ferguson. Well, it's been it's been a game in which uh, Celtic threatened to come back to him after the start of the second half. Well, they started playing a bit in the second half, but I think all through the, the Rangers have definitely been the better side. They've definitely attacked more, and uh, although both goalkeepers haven't had a lot to do, uh, I would say it's because of the final ball into the box. And the players waiting to resume the game with Derek Ferguson limping. Meanwhile, we are taking shelter under the television monitors there and keeping our eyes on the game and uh, a certain a section of the crowd. Put the way there. Counter-attack is on. And brilliantly attacking Morris Johnson. Paul McStay. Celtic undoubtedly will fight to the end. McGugan. Beautiful header by McGugan there under pressure. Well, young Derek White, I don't think, will come across a more awkward customer than the man he's been playing directly against today, Ted McMahon. Robin McLeod, this White to McLeod. He'll try to get his side going. Roy Aiken. What's a lovely ball by Aiken. Durant. I think that's a throw to Rangers, yes. Durant, uh, that goal described to you by Jim McLean as taken like a veteran, that's the best way to describe it. Only a teenager. Young player with a great future. Each day. Mardo McLeod wants the return and gets it. Willie McStay, Butcher is there. Cooper with his right foot. Now White to Aiken. Nice one for the side. Willie McStay. Celtic try to go right through the middle and they're fighting hard to retrieve this situation. Still Celtic though, getting a lot of ball in midfield. And I think a free kick for Jimmy Nichol holding the ball between his legs and a bit of aggro between McMinn and Paul McStay and quite unnecessary. Nickel is being booked. He should not have complained about that. The players up to now have made it an easy game for the referee and it would be silly now to spoil uh, the 83 minutes. I've been foolish now. And certainly Jimmy Nicholl was foolish in saying something, obviously, to the referee. 
It's a free kick to Celtic. And uh, virtually every Rangers player, in fact, every Rangers player in that penalty area now. Five minutes to go as Mother McLeod prepares to take this free kick. The dangerous looking one and it's over. Brian McClare. Well, that was a great chance. He was not picked up. And in a situation like that, if you're given that freedom, you've got to sink it. He went right between the defenders, and that was a marvellous chance for Celtic, perhaps one of the best chances in the game. The goalkeeper slipped there as he was about to commentate across. Well, that's interesting, Jim, because he was saying before the game that he felt the goal area was a bit too soft for him. Well, if you watch it in replay, without doubt, he slips as he's coming to take the cross and the left uh, the Celtic player with a free header. Celtic fighting hard. Nickel. And another free kick. Almost in the same position this time. Now, can Celtic get the players into the box like McClare did? Just 30 seconds previous. It's a crowded penalty area again. McPherson is up this time. Down it goes to McMinn. And he thumps it unceremoniously to the other end of the field. Bonner. Off the head of McClare, I feel. Oh, well. Seems to go off the head of McClare. How about throw to something? It's lofted forward again, and over. Well, Celtic have only, by my watch, three minutes to retrieve this game. Three minutes left. Rangers leading by that sole goal by Ian Durant. Scored in the 73rd minute. Come down the middle again, there's McPherson, still Celtic picking it up in midfield, trying all they know. Will the stay? Down the side it goes. In it goes and back out again, Ian Durant. Rangers under siege at the moment, tries to cam it down. Roy Aitken now seems to be playing in midfield and Peter Grant dropped back. I don't know whether he just dropped to the back there, but uh, it looks as a big voice piece so far. And that was a late tackle, free kick. Free kick to Rangers. And by our watch, a couple of minutes left. There will be some injury time. Adam Christ takes that down well. To Cooper. To Durant. And they almost slipped it inside there. One and out. That's McClare. And back to Wood. Fraser. Content just to put it to the other end and let Celtic come towards him again, although it seemed to me that Rangers' policy would be try to gain possession and hold it. McPherson, McMinn is after this, he's onside, but Bonner will be there. White, Mother McLeod, White. Right through the middle it goes, and back by Butcher. And Woods will take his time about this.
thank by Roy Aiken. Yes, free kick. And we're now into injury time. Free kick to Rangers. And they're pushing the players forward again. Here's McMahon. McMahon with it. Go to Rangers. Everybody looking towards the referee. There can't be much time left now. Here's McMahon. The final whistle. Rangers have won the first Old Firm game of the season. The first league game ever to be televised live. And the Rangers supporters in ecstasy after a very shaky start to the season. They've come back with what I consider was a commanding performance for long stretches of the game. The winning goal scored in the 73rd minute by young Ian Girard. Cooley striding forward to a pass by Davy Cooper and placing the final score, that only score of the game, with great applause behind the Celtic goalkeeper in a superb fashion. Thus, Rangers pick up two very valuable points and Graham Souness in the dugout sees his first league victory against the old enemy. Jim, your final summary. Well, I think it was fitting that a midfield player should score the goal uh, for Rangers. I think it was a deserved victory for Rangers. And uh, the boy Durant finished it exceptionally well. I think that's where the Rangers won the game. And there are the jubilant Rangers supporters celebrating in some style. It was a hard game, a fair game. It had its vital elements of good individual football. Combination of... Uh, carefully planned out strategies and some magnificent uh, player from the likes of Ted McMinn. McMinn quite brilliant. And look at this little reverse pass here. Just almost impudent side-footed pass for Ian Durant to strike forward, check his pace and then put it in. The winning goal. Well, Sitting watching this game as well, we've had uh, Diggy Donnelly and Andy Gray, who I'm looking down the platform as being talked to by various people over the stand, but I think we can go to them now, Diggy. Yes, quite a match, quite an atmosphere, and this is certainly no place for the faint-hearted in an old firm match, Andy Gray will certainly vouch for that. Uh, it really has been a remarkable match, but uh, obviously the winning goal when it did come, Andy, was one to save really, wasn't it? It was an absolute tremendous goal. I think Davy Cooper will take a lot of satisfaction from the goal. I think the little ball that he slipped to the little boy Durant was absolutely unbelievable. A world-class ball, really. And the little boy kept to say brilliantly. He committed the goalkeeper and slotted a great goal past him. Absolutely. Durant, in fact, made men of the match as well, and uh, with all credit to him. But I'm a little bit surprised it didn't go to Ted McMinn. I thought Ted McMinn had a, a tremendous game and, and thoroughly terrorised Celtic down this right hand side. I wouldn't argue with that. I think the boy Durant did a tremendous game. And of course, he scored the winning goal. They must be absolutely delighted today. That's right. A word on Celtic. They came back as we knew they would in the, in the second half and had their chances as well. Yeah, I think Brian McLear will be terribly disappointed. He had a great chance with about five minutes to go with a header from a free kick. And uh, perhaps if he, he should feel that he should have maybe hit the target there. He didn't even hit the target. <laughs> and, uh, he'll be disappointed that he didn't hit the target with that. But that was a good chance for Celtic to get the equaliser just at the, uh, sorry, the last few minutes. But, as tight as we expect these old firm matches to be, right till the very last kick of the ball, uh, the outcome in doubt, and that's what we expect, I suppose, yeah, from these matches. I mean, there are no favourites in, uh, in old firm games, there are no favourites in, uh, in any sort of local derby, it's very hard to pick favourites. Although we all thought Celtic before the game would start slight favourites, as it's been proved yet again in a local derby, you can never be sure of that. And uh, Rangers have got a lot of credit out of the game, Celtic are coming back second half and, and almost snatching a draw. But I think on reflection, a probably a fair result. Let's see again that uh, winning goal then uh, scored by Ian Durant after that lovely little touch by uh, David Cooper. 
seeing it this time from our camera behind the goal, the low angle and a chance for us to savour the skills of uh, David Cooper, the Rangers winger. Here it is again. Yes, he does absolutely tremendous here as he cuts it. And no one expects this little ball. And it's absolutely carves his tilted defence wide open. Goes to put it in, makes the goalkeeper dive and then just slots in a great little goal, really. That's right. He, there must have been a temptation there, I would think, for Duran to hit the ball almost first time. But yes. he waited and bided his time and committed Benny Bonner, didn't he? For a young lad, he was very, very cool, yes. And that's right. And a, and a winning goal, which was naturally received with a great delight along this end of the stadium. Anyway. I think, to be fair, it didn't look like anything was going to beat Pat Bonner today. I thought he, again, he had, he had a tremendous game for Celtic. I thought a couple of saves he pulled off throughout the game, kept him in it. And at one time, didn't look as if he was going to let a goal in. And it took an exceptional goal to beat him. That's right. The great thing, of course, about the, the Premier Division set up this year with 44 matches is that the, it's a result which obviously gives Rangers a lot of pleasure, but it's by no means conclusive in any sense. It, uh, oh, it's an awfully long way to go. I'm sure David Hay will settle for getting beat today as long as he takes the Championship at the end of the season. Um, you know, this result will count for nothing if, if, you know, if Rangers don't go on and win the league. You know, I don't think you can count the old firm games. They're, they're not the ones that will win the league in Scotland. I think the games against you and Motherwells and teams like that will be the results that will win games and win the championship, sorry. That's right. And again, let's mention the two Englishmen because yeah. uh, they made their debut and I think they can both feel very satisfied with, uh, with their performances. Yes, Chris Reeds, I thought, second half, he, he coped with some difficult crosses second half yeah. uh, and coped admirably. He'll be very, very well pleased keeping a clean sheet in his first old firm match. And Terry Butcher, skipper and first Englishman to skipper aside in an old firm match, will be delighted to skipper them to a victory. I thought he mastered his defence. He was booked well. for, for an admittedly late tackle. I, mean, I, I think it was slightly late, yeah, yes. Yeah. I think Terry will be first to admit that the ball had gone and, uh, you know, I don't think he could complain about his booking. But I mean, uh, a fine result for, for, for both English lads, yeah. All right. And of course, you were saying earlier you travelled up with Adrian Heath and, and Graham Sharp, two of your old mates right. from, uh, from Goodison. Uh, yeah. I wonder what they'll have thought of the game today. This was Adrian's first uh, sample of an old firm match. Obviously, Graham has, has seen one before, but this is Adrian's first. And we're just going downstairs to see if he's still alive or not. He'll have thoroughly enjoyed it, and I don't think he'll have seen anything like that. As I said at half time, both sets of supporters were absolutely magnificent. And getting behind the team and, uh, and chanting and singing, it was tremendous. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to make a collection up here in the gantry. Yeah, we're <laughs> Get, uh, one or two donations. I don't think it was to buy us a drink, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was the game when he collected from my, from the nipper's piggy bank when I get home. <laughs> so your first old firm game in what 15, 16 years? It must and, be the uh, game. Not disappointed. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Both both teams and both supporters go out of the game with a great deal of credit. Great stuff. Good to see you, Andy. Have it's a nice good season yourself. Good. I hope and, everyone uh, here is a good year. As we look around a remarkably deserted Ibrox, it's really quite astonishing how quickly the stadium clears. Let's leave the final words to Archie McPherson. Well, I'm told by the stadium authorities that it actually clears in six minutes for all those of you who like totally irrelevant statistics. There it is, an empty stand there where previously we had the Rangers supporters. Jim, Rangers supporters are quite clearly jubilant and have a right to be, have they not? Not just by the score, but by the performance. Well, I think that uh, without doubt uh, the Rangers deserve to win today. I think mainly in midfield they had complete control of the game in the first half. Celtic came into it a little in the second half, but at no time even had 50% of the play. And without doubt, Rangers, although it's only one nothing, thoroughly uh, deserve to win the game. Now let's talk about this man, Ted McMinn, because quite clearly a lot of people would come to Ibrox, even some Rangers support, and say, well, look, this man's a, a bit of a joke. He doesn't know what he's doing half the time. He had a remarkably effective game. Well, I think that the difference between uh, what a manager thinks of Ted McMinn and the supporter... That is, is the sort of run he has, Jim is without doubt the final ball is the only important factor as far as the manager is concerned. They're no good at beating three and four players. But I feel that today uh, Rangers uh, missed Colin West's uh, height in the box because some of the crosses that were played in there uh, were good enough for somebody a bit taller than uh, what they were getting into the box. Well, your, your ex-player down there, Andy Gray, said a very significant thing. He said the old winning of an old firm match doesn't win the championship for you, it's the other games. Well, I think that you've got to win uh, more games than anybody else to win the championship. And I don't think any one game uh, gets any more points than the other. And uh, at the end of the day, it's who has the most points. And uh, I think that uh, the supporters place uh, a lot more on games like this yeah. than uh, what probably managers and players yeah. do, although without doubt we want to win them. Jim McLean, thank you very much. And uh, the Dundee United manager will be in there at the death, as it were, for the league championship of that, I'm quite sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little piece of uh, sports broadcasting history, as I said at the start, that we brought to you this afternoon, BBC Scotland, the first ever live transmission of a Rangers Celtic league match. It turned out to be an extremely exciting, palpitating game in many ways. The only goal scorer, Ian Durand, that lovely goal he scored from that delicate piece of skill by David Cooper. The stadium deserted, as I said at the moment, 
And uh, there they are, they're all gone, but no doubt remaining here are many memories of a quite remarkable afternoon and Graham Souness gets the win he vitally needed. He's achieved it. So from everybody in sports scene, from all of us here at Ibrox, goodbye. <laughs>